Hey everyone, welcome to the show. As I keep mentioning in the videos today, I have a new look, new sound. So let me know what you guys think. Um, so as I jump into this video, don't shoot the messenger. That's all I'm asking. Um, the latest Washington Post ABC poll indicates that Democrats are in a bad spot. So if you guys were considering sitting this one out, please don't. Uh, this election is really resting on a knife's edge. But honestly, if the Democrats take a bunch of L's tomorrow night, it's because of political malpractice on their part. Um, but before I dive into the details of the polling, take a look at what this veteran pollster and Democratic political strategist found. He conducted very large focus groups with voters from across the political spectrum. Democracy Corps recently did a large survey and found the economic argument that resonates most with voters. It's pretty straightforward. So let me kind of present it in the form of a 30 second ad. Corporate profits are high, but hardworking families aren't seeing an increase in our paychecks. I'm running for Congress and if elected, the first thing I'm going to do is pass a bill that would deliver working people up to $600 a month to help with the rising cost of groceries, gas, and housing. And I want to pay for it by taxing big corporations whose greed is unacceptable. My Republican opponent is an extremist who takes contributions from oil and drug companies, and he doesn't get it. Let's work together to tackle the high cost of living. So what we found in our polling is that expanding the child tax credit resonates almost more powerfully than anything else we've tested uh, with working class voters under the age of 50. When voters understand that Republicans took the tax credit away, it is one of the most effective attacks that expanded child tax credit could deliver up to $600 a month in the pockets of working people. It's an economic promise that you can explain and show it how it makes a difference in their lives. And at the same time, you show how the Republicans are standing in the way. But here's the danger. When we tested arguments that tout democratic accomplishments, talking up the economy and the creation of good jobs, while avoiding discussion of the challenges of high cost of living, those messages provide the worst results. So if Democrats don't stop with their Reaganite, Clinton era deficit reduction BS and lean into an anti-corporate greed message, they're dooming all of us to Republican control for a very long time. So here's the deal. Here's why this is so dire. This poll that I, I referenced at the beginning was conducted between October 30th and November 2nd. Of the registered voters polled, 49% said that they plan to vote for the Republican in their district, while 48% said they were voting for the Democrat. Of likely voters, specifically, 50% said Republican, 48% said they're voting Democrat. And male voters are breaking hard for Republicans. 62% compared to 36% of men who plan to vote for a Democrat. As for female voters, 59% are voting for Democrat. 40% must enjoy being controlled by a man because they're sticking with the anti-women regressive Republicans. Now, what's interesting is that neither party has the kind of sizable lead that we've seen in previous wave elections. So this really does appear to be a jump ball. Although if past polling errors are any indication, then Republicans still have an advantage. Um, also, this latest poll shows independent voters prefer Republicans 53% to 45%. That's telling. In every election, Whichever party that independents side with are the ones who win. Um, and Republican respondents were more likely to say that they will definitely vote than Democrats. 80% of Republicans said that they are definitely going to vote or already had voted compared to only 74% of Democrats. That's pathetic. Um, Republicans are also paying closer attention to the election and then Democrats, 48% said they're following the election extremely or very close, whereas only 37% of Democrats said the same. And here's the other thing that's working against the left. Republicans, even in the 11th hour where we are right now, are still trying to suppress voter turnout. In Wisconsin, Republican lawmaker Janelle Brantgen filed a lawsuit on Friday of just last week to stop military ballots from being counted. 
I'm not kidding. So Republicans who claim to care so much about our troops and their sacrifices for our country are now saying, oh, no, their vote shouldn't count. You know, while military men and women are literally risking their lives in some cases to protect all of us, the GOP is saying, nope, their voices should not be heard. Nope, they don't count in our democracy. They don't matter. Also in Wisconsin, Republicans won another lawsuit that disqualifies ballots that require a witness signature if the witness address is incomplete. So this can apply to a lot of voters under Wisconsin law because all absentee ballots have to be signed by a witness. Then in Pennsylvania, voting rights groups are working tirelessly. They're just going crazy since last week. They're trying to reach and assist voters who failed to date their ballot or they put the wrong date. So you guys may recall from one of my Just the Tip segments that the court sided with Republicans and ruled that ballots with missing or incorrect dates would not be counted in this election. It's complete and total bullshit. And it's clearly meant to suppress votes, but that's the law. And right now, more than 7,000 ballots have been identified and set aside under these new guidelines. So the voters' names have been posted online to give them an opportunity to come in and correct the error. But how many people are going to go check the, the Secretary of State website to see if they're on that list? And these voting rights groups are saying that they've only been able to contact about 2,000 of those 7,000 people so far. And some of these voters can't get down to City Hall to update their ballot in time. You know, one news outlet spoke with a 95-year-old woman who said, I'm completely disabled. I have no way of getting there before the election. And in a state like Pennsylvania, where the race is as tight as it could possibly be, every vote counts. And that's why Republican lawmakers play these games. They know it's the only way they can win. So, I, you know, I wish in addition to her endorsement of John Fetterman, I wish we could get Oprah online on social media and on TV and walking people through how to complete a ballot properly. Um, and what an embarrassment that is for Dr. Oz, right? This woman who gave him his own TV show, held him up as this expert. She's now saying essentially, yeah, he's unfit to serve as a senator and everyone should vote for his op opponent. Anyway, um, in Florida, residents are fearful of running afoul of DeSatan's new voting laws, and they're not clear on the rules. Everybody's con confused about what's right, what they can do, what they can't do. One woman said she usually drops off her elderly parents' ballots, but she said this year she was too afraid to. So she drove them to a ballot drop box, and her mother walks with a cane, and her father is in a wheelchair. So not an easy feat, you know, and they're lucky they have a daughter that can drive them. What, what do other people do in that situation? So the, the director of a Florida voting advocacy group said, quote, these laws were put in place to intimidate people and that's what's happening. Yeah, that's what it's all about. This has nothing to do. They are not concerned. DeSantis is not concerned about voter fraud, which did not occur at a level to change the election in 2020. They are concerned that too many people will show up and they know that that's when they lose. It's that simple. So anyway, guys, I'll let you know when and if I hear more, and I will definitely let you know what all goes down tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.